field office too close. With hindsight, yes, but you have to be close to get accurate information. And uh, no one, no, no one could have anticipated the size of that search, its direction, or, or its speed. Pyroclastic surges can travel at up to 800 kilometers per hour, with temperatures of up to 500 degrees. They incinerate everything in their path, absolutely everything. It's a uh, hell coming towards you. They didn't stand a chance. All of them? Are you sure? Jesus. Uh, all right. Um, where's Jock? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, I'm walking into FEMA now. Just hang on. Listen, I'm going to pass you over to Wendy. I've got Dave Price on the line. He's in a backup field office in Bozeman. Okay, let's patch him through. Everyone, this is Michael Eldridge from USGS. Dave, this is Wendy Rice at FEMA. Do you have any update on the size of the eruption? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Jock Galvin left the scene by Chopper a little while back and said it was a single vent. But the GPS and SRI data show signs of swelling all over the park and increasing earthquake swarms. My guess is it's only a matter of time before we see new vents opening up. Thank you, Dave. Stay on the line and keep us up to date. Will do. Denver, bring all USAR teams to standby. Inform Governor Marshall this could be bigger than anticipated. Are we recommending evac? It's his call, but we're advising against. It's safer inside than on the highway. Well, as I was saying, our flight plan has us about 348 nautical miles south of Yellowstone at our closest point. So if uh, ash from your volcano does head our way, the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center will divert us long before we get anywhere near it. OK. Well, how often does VAC check the satellite? About every half hour. We can put in a call now for an update if it would make you feel better. Yeah. I, I, I'd appreciate that. If you keep me informed. Sure. Thank you. We're just getting reports, unconfirmed so far, of a major volcanic explosion in Wyoming in the United States. Early reports from Wyoming say the eruption has killed literally thousands of people. Many cities near the volcano in the Midwest have been destroyed. Authorities now fear a humanitarian catastrophe on an unprecedented scale. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boise, Idaho is reporting a citywide blackout. I'm getting reports of rolling blackouts west of Yellowstone. Ash fallen power and relay stations. I could tell our FEMA offices in Montana, Nebraska, Utah, and the Dakotas to shut down their power grids and switch to backup generators as of now and make sure those generators are protected against the ash. I'd also advise them to shut down all air conditioning units. The ash will get everywhere. OK. All federal buildings seem to seal up and start recycling their clear air. Go ahead, trigger two. I'm now monitoring the eruption column at level five zero zero. Indicates are below about two nine zero. The wind is westerly, but above that it bears around seven or northwest. Over. Hank, Hank, you got those coordinates? Two nine zero. The wind is westerly. Oh, man. It's directly across major commercial air routes. Hank, I want all airspace across the central USA cleared and put east and west coast on standby. Michael, where is your guy? I need him here. Rick Lieberman? Yes. He's in there somewhere. He was flying back tonight. Oh, okay. Anyone need some blanket? Uh, there you go. So? It's a single vent. Single vent. Yeah. So Mount St. Helens, then. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Come on. That... that smell. 
sulfur. Yeah, I got it. Does the guy have a zoom? Can you get him to zoom in? Trigger two, can you zoom in? Wait. Oh. Hey, you see that, Michael? Another one. Yeah. Yeah, that's bed number two opened up now. While it was just a single eruptive column, there was still a chance that things would be okay. But the, the second eruption, clearly there was so much magma and pressure in the chamber that it couldn't vent through a single column. Instead, the, the whole caldera began to unzip in a series of smaller eruptions. Once that started, we had, we had no idea how long it would go on for. Days, weeks, months. We just didn't know. Wing anti ice. Oh. Engine anti ice. Good for you. each year unexpectedly fly into ash clouds and on that night 35 did and that was just over the u.s flying into one of these ash clouds is, is worse than getting a dump truck full of sand thrown into your engines because volcanic ash was well, rock the ash melts over fuel nozzles, a turbine, various engine parts. Uh, the really amazing thing is, is how often the engines survive and, and restart once you get back into, into clean air. So we were uh, among the lucky ones. We, uh, we got down in one piece. Uh, and by the time we did get down, no one else was taking off uh, anywhere. <laughs> 